Welcome back to Behind the Box. Today we're bringing you our first impressions of Gloomhaven. So to stay away from any spoilers, we've decided not to talk about or show you anything that you wouldn't be able to see in the rule book. So Gloomhaven, if you're not familiar with this huge game somehow, <laughs> is a cooperative dungeon crawl game for one to four players where each player plays as their own unique character following this campaign that has been put together for the game. So each character is unique in their own backstories, their own personal goals, the cards that they can play, that are, their attributes and their skills and their abilities, and it's a legacy game. So as you play and as you level up, the world will change around you. So you'll add stickers to the board, locations you can visit, cards that you can unlock and items you can buy. Everything just changes and develops with you as you play it. This game blows my mind. Yeah, you can understand the phenomenon behind oh, yeah. it. Absolutely. It's huge. Not mm -hmm. only like the box size, but everything in there. I mean, we've only played just full disclosure about eight scenarios so far out of a potential just I think about a hundred. Mm -hmm. So we're still pretty new to it. So this is why it's just a first impression, not a full review. But man, it is good. Isaac, the designer, has every aspect. He's just put so much effort into combining and just keeping it all contained into its own thing. Yeah. But, it doesn't feel like just a generic fantasy game. No, it feels special. It feels like it's Gloomhaven. It, it, yeah, it really does. It's its own world, its own life. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's insane. It is really good. And I would say that um, while it is expensive, the production value is definitely there. What you're getting for inside that yeah. box, it's miraculous. It's, it's a real adventure, a, a vast, yeah. epic game <laughs> that... it is yeah it really is and it, it becomes sort of tailored and personalized to yeah. you and your your team because you'll have these starting characters you'll each select one get given your own personal goal mm -hmm. they'll have their own personal uh, decks of cards that they can use their own modifiers that they can use oh and the modifiers are great yeah because it's like you know when you've played a role-playing game um, you'll have dice that you'll roll to see if you succeed at a certain thing you were trying to do. But they do that in in uh, Gloomhaven as well, and they do it with a deck of cards, a de deck of modifier cards. So it's it's great because it's just dripping with theme, because as you advance through this game and you, you get more experience, you can modify this deck. So um, every time you try and attack somebody and you draw from this deck, you can make it better so there's less of those cards in there that are going to ruin your day. Yeah. <laughs> and you might even become more skilled, say, at um, like a frost attack, but you need the frost to already be in the air for you to make that attack. Well, you could modify this deck so that it it puts frost elements in there. Yeah. It's just really great because it's it's all yours. It's whatever you want. And as you grow as a character, you're building this. Yeah. You really are. You built everything. The progression in it is, again, it all ties into that theme and the immersiveness of it all. Because unlike a typical role-playing game, where like you might just get a plus two bonus, or mm -hmm. your dice might just go from a d4 to a d6, which feels a little linear sometimes, in this, it's very thematic and mm -hmm. dynamic. You choose what you want your character to be, and they start to become that. Someone else might play that same character in a completely different way. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it all ties together. Everything goes so perfectly. The the world, I, I can't even begin to explain <laughs> how impressed I am just with the effort that's gone into this game. It is really fun. It can be um, a bit overwhelming because they have given you so many choices. So yeah. the way that your uh, turn will play um, when you're in this dungeon and you're having this fight, um, your turn, you've got a deck of cards that you take to battle with you and just making the decision of what to put in that deck it's a tough one because you have to think i'm facing this battle what do i need to have you know with me mm -hmm. and then in battle you've got two you have to just choose of all those cards you have to choose two each turn each turn and sometimes some of these cards so they'll have a top and a bottom so the top is usually just your attacking um part and then the bottom is usually some kind of movement it's not always that way but that's usually how they're laid out. And so not only are you choosing between the cards and which one to use on those cards, 
but also some of these um, parts of the cards mean that you lose the card after you use it. So it's a great grand power that blows your mind, but yeah. then you lose that card. So not only are you deciding what to play, but you're thinking, oh, can I afford to lose this? Yeah, the, that's sort of the whole game is mm -hmm. this hand management. So yeah, you'll look at these cards and go, right, I can even do it for this effect. Or this huge, really powerful thing. But then for the rest of this scenario, I don't have it available to me. And when you run out of cards... You, your character's exhausted. You don't proceed with that mission anymore. And if everyone does that, you'll lose. Mm -hmm. And so you have to really manage everything pretty perfectly. And that kind of goes into the negatives of it is... As well as that, which gives you specifically... You get really bad analysis paralysis from that. It's a complex game. It is heavy, not only in actual weight, but in the rules complexity. It is, we've played, like I said, about eight scenarios mm -hmm. so far. I'm pretty sure in every single one, we've made a rules mistake. Oh, yeah. At least one. Yeah. Because not only, as you play, you get used to your own character, but the game starts to introduce new elements and new pieces of information. And so every time something new is added in, you go, right, okay, how does that interact with this thing or this thing? And so you'll find yourself tripping up these rules. There's so many rules to start with. A, a new group, I think, would struggle with this. Yeah, I I will say that we, especially our gaming group, has benefited from us having Chris, who <laughs> who is very experienced as a game master. When we used to do role playing games, he was the game master. He's used to, um, you know, looking things up, preparing. preparing yeah getting everything ready, getting everyone organized, reminding everybody of how things work and putting the work in, really. There's quite, you're used to investing into things and you do have to do that with this game because the rule book, although it's helpful, doesn't always have all the answers um, and you do sometimes have to turn yeah. online. So Isaac's put together this huge, really, really great frequently asked questions online but in the middle of a game, when you come into the situation, you usually just have to make a judgment call. Yeah. And I think newer groups will struggle with that, and they'll struggle remembering all the initial rules that they've got to know. And even just getting into the game, the rule book's not great at actually even starting you off. It doesn't really give you much of a setup. And so this, to me, is one of those games where a new group that's not familiar with heavier games or board games, that they hear the hype. They hear that it's like Skyrim in a board game. And they go, oh, we should get that and play. And this will be our like big campaign night that we'll do. And then it'll just fall flat. Yeah, if they, you're not willing to put in the effort. Or that, you're game... not, or that you're not aware that you need to put in yeah. that much more effort, you know. It can it, it can get on top of you pretty quick. Yeah, you might be disappointed. You might feel let down. I think that'll go away as we play it more. Yeah. Like the mo we've already gotten a lot better at it. We're remembering a lot of the stuff we were messing up on. And I think that the more we play, the more comfortable that we'll get with stuff like that. But... It's just something to be aware of. Is yeah. is it is a big investment in time in that, and kind of goes into our final thoughts. And that is, as well as the time there, you need to put time aside for this game, not just the learning, but playing it. Yeah. I would say, treat it like a role playing game. You know, if you've got a group of people, arrange. Okay, Wednesday night after school or after college or whatever, we're going to play Gloomhaven. Mm -hmm. Or Saturday, twelve till six, we're going to do a couple of scenarios in Gloomhaven. You can't just be like. What do you want to do? Oh, should we just whip out Gloomhaven? It's not that kind it's of game. It's not that type of game. It takes a long time to set it up. It takes a long time to get going. And then the missions themselves take a bit of time. So mm -hmm. you need to plan it ahead and make sure everyone's on the same page with that. Yeah, yeah. But with it being a role-play game like that, there are a lot of really fun role-playing things you can do. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely rewarding. I mean, when you're um, in Gloom Gloomhaven, you get opportunities to do these city events. So you get to know what's going on in the town and you can sort of put your stamp on it. You know, you can affect things that are happening mm -hmm. in the town. You can make it prosper or make it fail. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then even between places that you go to. So when you're on the road going between different um, adventures, you encounter different people, you have different events uh, that happen and it's an opportunity for you to, 
play as your character. And I find that that helps alleviate some of my AP, uh, my analysis paralysis. You know, it, it makes it easier to make a decision if you're not thinking as yourself, okay, what's the best thing for me to do right now? Instead, think as your character, what would my character do right now? It makes it so much more fun and and easier to make decisions. It does, yeah. It makes it easier. Like, a lot of times, because we play with three people, there's the two of us and a third player, and so what will happen is a scenario will come up, you've got to choose between options A and B. I might choose A. Lindsay might choose B. Our third player might go, right, well, my character would choose A, and so then I'm the one that, like, wins in that situation, and Lindsay doesn't get her way. There's no hard feelings, But though. there's no hard feelings, because it's, <laughs> it's all based on those, the characters that you're playing as, and my character might hate this one thing that we're now against that is great for me, and I'm really happy that that's the case. So, yeah, it, it really is a great opportunity to sort of flex that creativity, and mm-hmm. it kind of scratches that itch a little bit of role-playing groups, because you have yeah. that consistent routine of playing it, and playing as characters, and the progression, and... Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's a fantastic game, and I, I suppose just to sort of summarize for me, I I am excited to play more of it. Mm-hmm. I'm very look, looking forward to it. We'll do a review probably sometime next year when we played a bit more of it. Um, as for it being ranked number three at the moment on Board Game Geek, I don't think I agree with that. To be honest, I think it's a great game. It's probably the most impressive game that we yeah. own. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and eventually it might creep up higher for me in you know my own personal list of top 10 games but at the moment it's not that it's, it's it's high but it's not not top three for me or top five probably we're still just starting out in it so yeah. that our opinions might change but i know for me at least you know card games and hand management and stuff that's not really my style for me what wins me over is the opportunity to the role, role play, play. yeah yeah. So yeah, that is it. That's our thoughts on Gloomhaven right now. We'll probably do more in the future. Um, but if you do want to learn more about this game, then I'd suggest checking out the link we leave in the description. It'll be to the Gloomhaven page on Board Game Geek. Isaac, the designer, is very active there. So go over and if you need any questions answering, I'm sure he'll answer those for you. And as always, check out our links in the description for our social media. But until the next video, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Hey, Can I start again? Yes, please. <laughs> forgot I forgot how words worked. <laughs> Tell on your face. You you have that look on your face that that guy will comment is like she doesn't like she's very confident. She's always looking at him like, Can I get you a validation? <laughs> That's what the face you had. You're like